hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel that is deb chanel's 48's world and i am deb chanel welcome 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 thank you for all my subscribers yes new ones old ones and ones who are thinking about coming over happy holidays as well but we're gonna be talking about girl the merit of medicine Marital Medicine, last episode for the season, which was 7, and episode 15, all right? Then too much really happened to towards the end at Toya's uh, housewarming party when everything seemed to have gone to straight hell, okay? <laughs> no help, okay? It was more Contessa that started the uh, mess off, and... It was just already going downhill with um, Buffy seems like she's having um, a setback with the notion of thinking about her being a loser in her eyes, not being able to carry a baby to full term. And, you know, it brought up some uh, deep seated issues that she once had in the past that she thought she had buried and everything had um been settled in her mind but after you know dr jackie bringing up her infertility and countless of um apologies jackie have given to buffy about exploiting her on that particular day during that particular function of hers and uh, just a whole gamut of things because my thing is i'm tired of buffy myself i mean good god Lord and behold, you have the resources, okay? If you can't, hear me now. If you can't have a baby, you can't hold the baby to full term, talk to your sister channel, which is Candy Burris over there at Real Housewives of Atlanta. She felt guilty about someone else hosting her baby or baking her baby for her for full nine months because she couldn't. I mean, you're in the same predicament Candy is. Couldn't carry a child or had complications in carrying a child and just didn't want to go back through it. So surrogacy was her only uh, point of contention that she had to master in her mind that that's still her baby. Okay, because she's using her own eggs. She's using her husband's sperm. They're just needing an oven for the baby to cook in. Okay, so... <laughs> You need to get over it. How Contessa pretty much put it was lackluster. It was inhumane. And I don't know, maybe she thought y'all were going to war or some sense. And she flipped back, in, flipped back into her military days where she thought you were uh, a military woman yourself. And she was giving you tough love on the spot, which was definitely something um, that she shouldn't have even partaked in. Because God knows, she saw you. And the fragileness you were having, or she was having, meaning Contessa, when she felt her husband went on her side and she broke down and just then third. Somebody could have quickly, you know, held her head real tight and brought her back to reality or tried to bring her back or snap her back into reality about letting her know, look, life is not over. You still can go on. Maybe differently. Maybe the outcome is not for you right now, but you still can go on. Put it past you. You know, she could have did, Buffy could have did that to um, Contessa when they were on that trip in Mexico. But no, she was the bigger person. She went and sought her out. She comforted her. She tried to let her know that she didn't have uh, pretty much the fault in this situation that her and her husband is going through. You know, she needs to be proactive. She told her, you need to talk to your husband. Uh, get him on the same page you are, and then y'all move forward together. I mean, Buffy was a poor uh, champ in that situation. And for Contessa to just slap her in the face, in a sense, with all the verbiage she used to her, to, towards her on this night, tonight's episode, was just poor, foolery, fuckery, and total inhumane in her whole demeanor and character i'm like uh uh no 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 we don't do that that's not something you do in being a human being but okay to everything we're gonna throw caution to the wind and just briefly go through this uh last episode for season seven of merit to medicine okay it was titled arabian nights and the whole theme of this particular last episode was centered around toya's um uh, 
housewarming party. You know, she gives these extravagant, uh, never thought of presentations of anything she puts out. It's going to be spectacular. And it's going to be talked about. And remember, those are the things that Toya's claim to fame she has when it's planning events and executing parties. Okay? So... Um, we go into that first scene. We got Contessa and her kids and her husband. They all having family time, uh, playing around the pool. The definitely the girls are enjoying themselves. Um, Contessa and her husband Scott sit around the pool, discussing that you know they're be- definitely on better grounding uh, footage when it comes to keeping their family together and them coming back to a, a mutual point of respect and love and admiration admiration for both each other so um scott's like i'm glad you're going back to school i'm looking forward to you going back to school and she's all gushing and you know saying you know but thank you and you know i'm proud of you too and you know it's a whole little banter thing going on we're respecting one another when when all this could have been avoided they could they're two professional people but It seems like they both were wanting what they wanted and they wasn't willing to give and take in the situation, okay? But somehow this counselor, after what, two visits we saw, miraculously got them back on the same page and they're thinking about each other instead of uh, getting what they want individually. So, yeah, that was... uh, an eye-opening experience if you want to take it that way she's gonna still be going one last semester up to nashville tennessee to finish her um public health master of science degree in public health and um he told her he's going to bring the kids up there to visit her because she don't need to be traveling and carrying on, trying to come see them. She could be using that time to study, blah, 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 blah. We got finished with that whole situation. We go to Jackie. Jackie is coming home to her new mansion. But, of course, they're gutter- They're taking the opportunity to start the demolition type of uh, construction going on. Um, from my understanding, when she came home, she was asking the person that was on the outside how how long it's going to take, this, that, and the third. He said, well, you can go back for a week, and then we'll be done, and everything be, you know, kosher. And she was, like, laughing it off and going inside. And as she was coming home, uh, the two architect or planners to revamp her existing house and transforming it and all of that renovating, they were there waiting for her. They had a hard hat as a gift present to her with her initials, Jackie. And I guess she's supposed to go and break out some walls herself uh, as groundbreaking type of uh, ceremony. So um, they gave her this little pink cute hat, a hard hat or safety hat. And further on in the scene, Curtis and her went to a particular area of the house and they made a big old hole in the wall to show that they're you know they're getting things together and just that and third boring they could have kept it out she goes on to tell curtis that she's really thinking about you know what he was saying about they need to spend time together this that and third blah 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 she tells curtis she's taking 10 working days out her schedule she's going to take him to the south of france they're going to spend uh lovey-dovey time together connecting with one another he loves the whole idea he's asking you know who has replaced his wife with this particular woman because he don't recognize her blase blase uh it is what it is okay um then we go to let's see well i guess we can just talk about toy she's sitting there Done a, uh, invited a, a event planner to come in and do her housewarming party. And he's having all these fantastic ideas, probably from what she told him over the telephone, what she wanted him to do for her or create for her. And I guess he thought he was dealing with a, a $100,000 budget or at least fifty. And then Tori told him, oh, we ain't dealing with, with 10000 He said 10000 <laughs> He looked like he wanted to just get his pamphlets, his book, and it just escaped to Never Never Land or something. He was like, girl, don't be wasting my time. Are you serious? I know we family, but are you serious? He said, um, we ain't got, <laughs> he said, no, we ain't got nothing in here for you. And he showed her this other book. He said, I guess we can, like, 
make some things happen another way. We'll make it beautiful. We'll work with that 10,000. This, that, that. I say, toy you, toy you, toy you. When you put out these uh, messages for some event planners to give you a call, you should have told them up front. You want to spend them $10,000. They can do whatever. Make some dreams happen. But <laughs> we ain't going over that, okay? You already got find us your pending to come. Uh, Eugene already said he's taking a hit on having not to pay for this house. But I guess with your money from Merit to Medicine that you're getting, you're supposed to take care of the household as far as buying the food and this, that, and the third. I mean, I don't really know what you do, but whatever you're doing is doing well because you're staying at home with your kids, providing a full-time mom setting for them, as well as, you know, being able to cater to Eugene whenever he comes home because I'm pretty sure he's at work from sunup to sundown, all right? But it just is what it is he chose to live that life he chose you to have the position that you do hold so it's all good but she meets with the planner and the man goes on and say you know Toya tells her or tells him what she wants or would like to see her vision or whatnot but it's going to be on a smaller care it's a smaller um what do you call it a smaller uh scale because she only dealing with ten thousand all right so he goes, she's talking about she wants a camel and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, a camel? Okay. Well, it's going to be about 4000 about 4500 She said, no, I need something cheaper. <laughs> I said, no, you need to go find a circus, honey, or a pet shop and just see if you can bargain with them to see if they can take some of their exotic creatures that you want and see if they'll let you have them for a couple of hours, okay? And then you'll properly, we'll get them back to the store ASAP. All right, that's what you need to be looking for a circus or a pet store. But that's just my pun intended. Wink, wink. Okay, because that's probably where he got them exotic animals from. <laughs> so you call herself having a python, or I think my daughter said it was a boar constrictor. Something similar to what um, Britney Spears had. Uh, hanging around her neck uh, throughout some performance she did or a video. I think it was called Slave for You or something like that. But anyway, it just is what it is. She had one of those. She had a camel. I was like, well, damn, where's the lions, tigers, and bears, baby? <laughs> Tori was tripping the hell out of me. The hell out of me, okay? But I look for her to give me drama, laughter, and just a sensibility of warmth. Okay, she gave me all of it. All of it. So I ain't mad at her, honey. Um, let me see. Oh, and then uh, Tori was saying that she wanted to have a hookah bar setting, you know, staged out and everything. And they said, okay, I think we can get it. Um, but we have to uh, fly it in from Jerusalem. <laughs> I said, but can't y'all go just rent one out at the, one of them restaurants or whatever? I'm, I'm trying to give her a deal. I'm like, this man talking about bringing everything from all these different damn countries. Hey, well, we got anything in the States, in Georgia, that don't have to be imported in, okay? I was like, where y'all getting this man? Where, got, where did you find this man? Craigslist, honey. Girl, but anyway, that was just a whole mess. But he seems like he's going to find her something. Uh, not her dream of ex, uh, extravagance. He's going to put her on her little budget and they're going to do what they got to do. But, honey, he brought these women out here uh, to host the, um, the hookah bar section of the um event and she was like okay i love the hookahs they are just you know cool it was number two of them i think but uh the girls that were there they were like okay then when are y'all getting out y'all clothes and i'm looking at toria and on my tv screen yes i was then i'm looking at the women i'm like toria what the hell are you talking about you ain't have no strippers you ain't tell the man to bring no stripper pole to have no strippers out there those women are not curved enough to uh, fit what you're trying to do you need some strippers baby <laughs> <laughs> they ain't about that life, okay? And so that was kind of funny to me that uh, Toya and Eugene want them, them women to strip out of their uh, work clothes uh, into some stripper pole clothes. Or, you know how them Arabian women look like when they be trying to, you know, 
ballet um, bali dance or whatever you know moving their hips and their inner stomach and that, that wasn't that kind of party so i ain't finna do all that i was here to cater to make sure everybody is inhaling right and exhaling and and making sure we replenish the hookah bar thing or whatnot and hell we can go over there and serve drinks if we have to but we ain't stripping Mm-mm, we ain't giving y'all nothing for eye candy all right so <laughs> Eugene and uh today was kind of disappointed in that. And I thought I said, well y'all strip out and get in y'all bikinis or whatever and get up there and host your own hookah bar and see what goes on, okay? But they were doing too much. I'm like, Eugene got a little freak side in him. Toy don't make him free. But anyway, moving from that situation, um we go to excuse me, on Toy's party. Everybody's getting ready for Toy's party. Uh, Dr. Contessa and Scott are over there somewhat getting together. Um, and Tessa's getting her hair done and and all this other kind of stuff she got to prepare herself for the party. Uh, Dr. Simone, they getting ready and just stand third. So we actually have this scene where uh, Dr. Simone and Cecil are uh, riding with um, Buffy and her husband. I think his name is Dwight. Or, I can't think of his name. I think I want to say it's Dwight. But anyway, I know it's a D. But anyway, um, they're riding to Toya's party together, and they're talking about different things in the car. And, you know, Buffy's uh, pretty much reminiscing on the fact that she can't have children and this, that, and the third, and that, you know, the situation that happened uh, in St. Lucas, uh, Mexico, and just bringing up old habits of, putting her to reality of her fate with being able to carry a child to fruition or, you know, the months it needs to, um, what a whole nine months she would need to carry the baby and how unsuccessful she was and, you know, being able to do that and how she had to go back into therapy. Cause I guess she tried to jack it and her antics put her back in therapy. <laughs> she had become a, a shock, um, what do you call it? Shock post-traumatic stress and she had to go on back to the therapy couch and get some counsel i'm like well i know it's kind of unethical that your husband is not supposed to counsel you but with you living with a full-time psychiatrist in your house babe it seems like you should know the steps that they will take you through but i guess maybe she wants to talk with somebody so she can blame her husband a little bit and he don't have to hear it and Feel, get into his feelings and then he be on somebody's couch or whatnot trying to release his emotions but it just is what it is she confessed to um Cecil and Simone as they're driving to toy party that you know she has relapsed she's going back for therapy and this that and the third and Simone is feeling some kind of way and um uh, you know, Cecil ain't really saying too much because he got his shades on. He probably plastered already. He's like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to hear no more because it's making me upset. And because they know Dr. Jack had really was foul in that whole situation. So they finally get to the party and everything and everybody's enjoying themselves. Dr. Helen finally shows up. Uh, contesting her husband finally show up jagging her husband finally show up and everything is going real good real smooth and all this that and third and um simone went and had some quiet time with jack and say you know jack oh i really need you to do better with your apology i didn't really think it went so deep and and it really hurt buffy but she's really holding on to a lot of unresolved issues about this issue uh, of infertility and it's really taking its toll on her and this and the third and i'm like i'm with jack and now damn how many times you got to apologize my goodness gracious i mean woo! because that last apology i really thought that was a, a a true heartfelt apology it was caught on tv where everybody can see it, it she was normalizing the whole situation she took full accountability for what she said and this and third and i thought it was it you know done with now buffy she's just doing a little bit too much i mean come on like i said talk with candy do some surrogacy get some on joy back into your life just because you're not fit or or, or functioning where you can carry a child for nine months 
the Lord made another way for you, baby. He let you have the revenue and a good ass man by your side to sit there and be able to try other avenues to bring a baby in your life. There's adoption, there's surrogacy. Um, I don't think I know anything else that would basically give her a baby or you could be a foster parent you know however it's ways of getting what you need okay and with surrogacy you got your husband's sperm you got your egg so that's pretty much your baby you know your dna you just having somebody um carry it for you for those nine months and stuff so talk with candy she has a lot of she has a plethora of information or definitely resources or people that can talk with you about this and be done with it buffett be done with it stop you know dwell Pulling on that fat and get with the other facts that can bring a baby in your life sooner rather than later. But anyway, um, Dr. Simone, in all her meddling ways, called herself convincing Jackie to apologize again. And she goes over there and get um, a buffy from Dr. I mean, I thought about Mariah. And um, she brings her over there and Dr. Jackie, you know, goes in to just, you know, give her a heartfelt apology again. And Buffy just busts out crying. And I'm like, oh, somebody get her some tissue. Because she needs to be on some medication. She's just everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's just too much, you know. How much can a person apologize? Was it wrong? Yes, it was. How many times Jackie apologized? About three or four now. It's kind of getting redundant. But anyway, um, she seemed like she, she kind of still... Uh, understood where Jackie was coming from and it's a process she gonna have to work in her mind to let it go relax relate and release it you know it's nothing nobody else can do it's just her taking the steps meaning Buffy understanding what was done to her was foul but you know the person did admit that they were wrong and you know this that and the third and, and it's time for you to move on child but anyway um Jackie still feels some kind of way that Dr. Simone would come to her again, but she went on and did it. And lo and behold, um, I think Buffy just felt it was just too much for her and whatnot. And she said, forget this. I'm going home. I, I just can't take it. And I'm like, yeah, because you need some medication. You need to be on an even keel. And medication is not a bad thing. You're not carrying your baby anyway. If you decide, which we do know, you decided to have a surrogate carry your child because it was in social media so that's a good thing salute buffy thank you buffy for moving on get your mentality together if you have to be on medication that's a good thing not a bad thing try it it's okay and uh move on and be go be great as you have been but continue to be great and go on and prosperous okay and look for your bundle of joy in eight or nine months how, how long it may take i don't know because you the child may have already found a surrogate and it's cooking you know what i'm saying so whether it's nine months eight months whatever months we're looking at congratulations but anyway uh yeah so um she gets out of there she says she gotta go home she tired of looking at this lady swallowing swords and fire starters and you know, this this moving art running around now, and she don't give a shit about the camel, and she's just tired. So uh, emotionally, she's drained. So I'm like, well, damn, do she know that she came? She brought Simone in with her. I mean, Simone gonna leave with her, her and Cecil because she just, you know, really running. They ain't drive no car. So that's an interesting um, feat that she's doing. But under the circumstances, I guess they can catch a Uber, okay, or ride back with somebody else, okay. Well, you know, it don't matter, matter. They got money like that. So, uh, Dr. Jackie going to find Curtis. And she said, Honey, I'm tired of this group. I'm going to have to find me another group to hang out with because I ain't going to be uh, keep apologizing, apologizing, apologizing. You know, Curtis just going on being a a, um, a tool of vent, letting her vent and stuff. He ain't really saying too much or whatnot because you know she ain't serious. She just mad at the time. So they take Buffy on into Toy's closet because Toy's trying to figure out what was wrong with her and this, that, and third. And I'm like, Toy, just because you feel in love and you love your closet and it makes you wind down, don't mean nobody else want to go in their doggone closet and, and uh, vent their whole life to you or whatnot. And then they come out feeling refreshed and everything. But anyway, they they talk Buffy into going down there to cool off to calm down. Child, you got Contessa coming in. 
like a storming, I don't know, a drill sergeant or whatever. And Dr. Simone trying to stop her saying, uh-uh, don't go in there with that type of attitude. She's broken. This, that, and the third. And she was like, uh-uh, we're going to straighten her out. Like, we can, you know, pop her back into place or whatnot. And to tell us to go down there and make a fool out of herself. Buffy started hollering at her and carrying on. And, but, I mean, uh, Kentucky's trying to grab her face to, like snap her out of it like she's being hysterical down there and it don't make no sense and then Katessa started hollering and uh Buffy started hollering back at her and then somebody I forgot someone of the, um the women had said I had a miscarriage oh it was Mariah was talking about the miscarriage that she had and then Katessa and somebody I had several miscarriages too and I'm like girl what is this who who want to be seen today or something? Who wants to have the bigger and better storyline for the camera to be focused on them? I'm like, this was Buffy issue. Now Mariah got something to say about losing babies. And then uh, Contessa got something to say. Like, Contessa, we don't want to hear too much from you no more. Because, you know, you don't board, board us and drain us with the whole situation about Nashville, Tennessee. And that school you wanted to go to and this and that third. So, girl, sit down somewhere. We're tired of you, okay? But anyway, Buffy got the hell out of there. She told her husband to come on. She left. And everybody started jumping on Contessa. Because Contessa was just being rude. She was being aggressive. And, and Toya was right there. I'm like, VIP of this particular um, sitcom show, Married to Medicine, for today's episode. Oh, Toya is the MVP. She just went on a toe. Um, what's her name? Dr. Contessa. Whatever you did to her... You turned around, or, you know, whatever somebody did to you, you sat around and did it to Buffy. That was totally negativity that you were giving her. You were being passive aggressive. You weren't listening. You were responding. You wasn't listening to her to uh like she listened to you or what now when you were going through your issue you just judged jeered her and sentenced her and just told her to snap out of it like you could do that she said that was crazy what what were you thinking so she like oh, okay i guess i have to apologize to her like did you just morph into another a way of thinking are you bipolar or something babe? do you need medication or wh what's going on because you just metamorphosize into something totally someone totally different you were very aggressive very passive of what she was going through which was seriously emotional breakdown and you weren't recognizing you want her to snap out of it pop out of it get back to yourself you weren't even uh, analyzing her you wasn't even sympathizing you didn't show her no empathy but now you want to go i'm like girl you need to be on some medication too but anyway Mariah was all hell bent down and she was ready to go into her and they were fussing and Mariah got a hold of her hand wouldn't let it go um the contestant had to like shake it loose from her shake away from her hold and everything and she was like you know you being aggressive you hollering at me she said well hell ain't that the same what Toya said ain't that the same thing you did to Buffy so she was getting it played back on her double time and she didn't like it but she wanted Buffy to understand where she was coming from when she was hollering at Buffy so I'm like go ahead Toya drive her behind in the ground let her know what time it is y'all ain't got time for that mess that contestant are trying to put out there so pretty much it seems like if the cameras would have let it be and it wouldn't have been no infractions uh mariah was gonna get a hold of her behind they were gonna be fighting up there and we had to just turn off the camera so it wouldn't be nobody saying they saw whatever you know what i'm saying just be a fight wink wink but we won't put it out on tv to be shown but yeah that's what it's saying like they want to get to fight especially um contessa was being the more aggressive one towards mariah just trying to make her point but you know everything was very smooth everything was very positive uh, after the fact <laughs> Uh, you can tell that they finna start some mess between Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie, as well as what we have heard uh, throughout uh, social media about the rift between Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie and where it's stemming from. And, of course, they're not sisters or acting like sisters at this time. They're just trying to get through the reviews or the reunion. But one and two, that's supposed to air on the 27th, I believe. Not 27th. Wait, I think it is the 27th. I think they are coming on a Friday. Or it might be the 29th. Either or, they're supposed to be doing part one and part two of their reunion. And then they're supposed to come back, I think, in January and do the other um yeah, the other...
part of the reunion, I think. I might got my days mixed up, but as we get close, I'm sure I'll let y'all know. No, y'all let me know. Hell, on that day, y'all just see a video drop. <laughs> And that would resolve everything, okay? But that's all I pretty much have for this um, uh, final episode review for the Married to Medicine franchise, okay? It was called, <coughs> excuse me, it was um, season 7, episode 15, and it was called Arabian Nights, all right? The toy you did a very nice job with the little budget she had. And I say little because toys used to spend a hell of a lot of money. And then she didn't get that. Um, I think Eugene really felt that she still went over. But he's a loving man. He loves to see uh, Toya be happy. Like they say, happy wife, happy life. And, you know, they did lose a baby this, I think it was the last season or the top of this season. And she talked a lot about that or, you know, during one episode she talked about how she lost the baby. And, you know, it really affected her some kind of way and this, that, and the third. So she knows. That's why she understands Buffy uh, plight that she's going through very heartfelt and emotionally she can feel all of it because it happened to her so uh yeah it was a good episode um kind of boring to a towards the end where all the excitement really did happen and definitely must look at the um what do you call it the reunion especially one and two because they supposed to be popping like hot popcorn down now child we all got to be there and we got to get it together god willing okay but that's all i had y'all get down in them comments y'all tell me what y'all thought about tonight's episode and where it all went wrong and who were wrong and why they were wrong and we can just dialogue about it okay but happy holidays and don't forget to subscribe to my channel subscribe 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 like and share my videos okay and and happy holidays, and I'll see y'all next video. Good night.